The Tojo clan is struck by Kyure clan gunfire. Kamarocho's disarray only spreads wider. On the surface, the diagram resembles a Yakuza turf war. But in the shadows are glimpses of a construction firm and political influence. And in Yagami's own shadow, the mole's sharp claws claim yet another victim. What do you mean he's dead? Didn't you just say everything would be okay? Stay calm, sorry, son. I'm just as shocked as you. But I think the mole is responsible. <sighs> Have you contacted the police? No, not yet. You should do that right away then. Do you think you could make the call, sorry, son? What? I need time to check things out before the cops show up and take over. Please. Yeah, okay. Thanks. We received a call from the Genda Law Office. You got here fast, Detective Kuroiwa. Shintani, huh? Yeah. His name has been coming up a lot lately. He's the reason Hamura walked, after all. <laughs> Perhaps you couldn't stand his newfound fame so you often. I heard you two weren't exactly on good terms. <laughs> Do you greet everyone by accusing them of murder? Guess that's just how cops like you operate. Forensics will be here soon. We will need you present as a resident of the property. After that, we'll need some time to investigate. How long? We'll have to find somewhere else to stay tonight at the very least. <sighs> I don't have money for that. Yet you can afford bribing a cop. Ayabe's sources aren't even that reliable. Don't know what you mean. Oh, I'm sure you do.
Yeah, sorry. I had to wait around for the cops to get here. Is Genda Sensei still at the office? Yes. He wants to talk to you about Chintani. As do I. Hoshino, too. Okay, I'll head over now. See you soon. I know you've had a rough night, Yagami. But if you're up to it, can you tell us what happened to Shintani? Sari-san was having trouble getting in touch with Shintani. So I decided to give him a call myself, see what the deal was. But when I dialed him up, I heard the phone ringing in my closet. Shintani was killed the same way as all the others. The others? Do you mean his eyes were... Gouged out, yeah. But Shintani's beef was with the Kyore clan. Why would the mole target him? I'm not so sure. It sounded like he knew something when you talked earlier. Right. Think this is some kind of Yakuza pissing contest, do ya? Come on! The mole is way bigger than you know. He probably knew more about the mole than I did. And his source had to have been Hamra. Maybe they killed him to keep their secret safe. But... Uh, why did he have to put Shintani-sensei's body in your office? Not sure. Maybe to harass me? Maybe to scare me off their trail? <laughs> Maybe both. Yagami. Hmm? You might want to lay low for a bit. It's not safe for you here. Get out of town. Go somewhere quiet. If the mole comes after you next... Right. I'll do just that, Genda-sensei. You know... I watched over Chintani since his first day as a lawyer. Kid had a good head on his shoulders, and a knack for the job I could never compete with. But he didn't have the guts to succeed when push came to shove. Not the most persistent lawyer I've seen. Even so, he looked up to me. Guess I took it for granted. Thought he'd always be part of the team. When I first joined, Shintani-sensei was the one who showed me the ropes. He was a reliable man. Thanks for this, Yagami. Come on, Sarikun. I'll walk you to the station. Sure. Feel free to stay here tonight, Yagami. <laughs> I appreciate it. What about you, Hoshino-kun? I think I'll work a little more before I head home. If you say so. Good night. Good night, boss. Make yourself at home, Yagami-san. I'll leave you the key. You've been here way longer anyway. You deserve it more than me.
Um, Yagami-san, do you have a minute? Sure, what's up? Well, it's about Shintani-sensei. Yagami-san, I know you just told Genda-sensei you're gonna lay low, but that's not true, is it? You want to keep hunting down this killer. And if I said yes? Don't worry, I won't tell Genda-sensei. But in return... Hmm? I want to help you. Look for the mole, that is. I won't slow you down. I promise. Looking to avenge Shintani, huh? <sighs> He wasn't as strong as he let on. The tough guy act was a mask he wore to hide his insecurities. Deep down, he was just weak. That's why he was going along with Hamura, not because he wanted to. I mean, who can say no to a Yakuza? And now look how it turned out. I was sitting right next to him this whole time. Yet there was nothing I could do to help. You know, I'm still young. I don't even know what kind of lawyer I want to be. Criminal? Civil? Not the slightest idea. But I know one thing. I don't want to be the kind of lawyer who sits on his hands after his friend gets murdered. Which means... Are you sure about this, Hoshino? Genda-sensei told me to lay low. If you're seen helping me... Don't worry about that. I'll defend myself in court if I need to. Now, Yagami-san. Do you mind if I tag along? <laughs> You'll just tell Genda-sensei if I refuse, huh? Yeah, you got that right. Not much choice then. Welcome aboard. Glad to be working with you. Well, let's get down to business. First off, I want to know what Shintani was doing before he died. And I have some evidence that may tell us just that. Shintani dialed this number earlier today. I want to know where it goes. Right. That makes sense. It's a good thing the killer forgot to take Shintani's phone, huh? This way we can see who he was calling. The killer didn't forget. Even if the phone was gone, we'd still be able to get Shintani's data from his provider. Really? I had no idea. Yep. I bet he left the phone so I'd find the body quicker. Huh? I mean, he went through the trouble of hiding it in my office of all places. Probably wanted to cause as much chaos as possible, you know? Hey! The number got a hit in the search! It's apparently for the, uh, Advanced Drug Development Center? What the hell? What, do you know it? Three years ago. There was a pretty famous murder there. A patient was killed, and their body dumped in the mountains. And the man they arrested for it was named Shinpei Okubo. Okubo, Okubo. Wait, he was your client, wasn't he? He worked as a contract laundry man for the center. Every two or three days, he'd stop by to pick up their dirty linens. According to the police report, it was thought he carried the body out in a bundle of sheets. Right. And you defended him in court, and won. But then he... he got free and... You can stop there. But why would Shintani-sensei have called the ADDC? Who would he even talk to? I bet we'll find out if we give them a ring. But it's getting late. You should go home. We both need some shut-eye, yeah? Yeah, we can start fresh tomorrow. Where do we want to meet? Oh, right. <laughs> we want to keep this a secret from Genda-sensei, after all. There's an arcade called Charles up on Park Boulevard. That should work for now. Okay. I'll let Kaito-san know. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'll see you.
Excuse me. Excuse me. This is Yagami. Must we? Yeah! 
Excuse me. Excuse me.
Really, guys? Gira. Kaito-san told me you'd be here. Don't forget about me next time, yeah? Wish you'd fucking forget about me. Is there a reason your little gang needs to keep meeting up here? It's so nice of you to let us use your store, Higashi-san. Especially when you're clearly so opposed to the idea. Don't talk down to Yakuza, kid. It's okay, Higashi-san. I think we all know you're nicer than you let on. What the hell? Damn. And you're braver than you look, Hoshino-kun. You got the skills to back it up? Just a third-degree black belt. Huh? Not that I've ever had to use it. <laughs> well, I'll call this meeting to order. Sure. I'll do the honors. Masamichi Shintani of the Genda Law Office has been murdered. Given that his eyes were gouged out, it's likely the Mole was responsible. And I'll need all of your help to track him down. The ADDC, huh? Weird time for that to come up again. <laughs> again? It's come up before? We can talk about that later. What's important now is Shintani called them before he was killed. Hmm. I think I remember them being in the news a lot last year. Something about a new drug that could win a Nobel Prize. Yeah, here it is. The ADDC's research into AD9 has now been published in one of the world's leading scientific magazines. Leading to the gathering of reporters from both Japan and abroad that we have here today. It's a brand new dementia drug. They call it AD9. This was right after Director Kido from the ADDC published his paper on it. They're still undergoing clinical trials on larger animals, but apparently every single mouse they've given it to has made a full recovery. Now with the, the man giving the presentation here is Dr. Ryusuke Kido, a world leader in neurophysiology and the primary researcher on AD9. He's the one who showed me around the center when I was looking into Okubo's case. Guess he's been the director for a while now. From what I can tell, the Ministry of Health is increasing the ADDC's budget to hasten the development of AD9. They're even adding another building to the center. It's a huge project. <laughs> Damn good deal they've got. I'm still not getting it, though. Why Shintani go and call them? That's what we're about to find out. And there's only one way to do that. Come on! Can't just take a man's phone. First off, we'll need to figure out who Shintani was calling. Yeah, but how are we gonna do that over the phone? I suppose that all depends on your acting skills, Detective Yagami. <laughs> ADDC, front desk speaking. Hi there, ma'am. This is... Well, who I am doesn't matter. Huh? But anyway, uh... I think a lawyer named Shintani called your office yesterday. I was wondering if you could connect me with whoever he spoke to. I'm sorry, but I can't do that. It's in violation of our personal information policy. Well, the truth is, Shintani-san passed away yesterday. This is the last number he dialed, so I'm calling to ask about him. Are you 
with the police. You're not, are you? Uh, well, not exactly. I. You know what? Uh, I'll try back later. <laughs> no way this happens over the phone. It'll be faster to just head over there myself. You think that's gonna work? Not sure, but I know the director, remember? Worst case scenario, I come back empty-handed. I'll come with you, Yagami-san. Okay. Me and Agashi will go check out what's going on with the Matsugane family. Shouldn't be tough with Hamura out of the picture. Hey, I don't remember saying I was gonna help you. By the way, Yagami-san, whatever happened to that guy from three years ago? Shinpei Okubo. He's in the detention center. Been there since they gave him his death sentence. Have you ever gone to see him, Yagami-san? No. Why would I? Why do you ask, anyway? <laughs> I don't know. I was wondering what he was like. The case got tons of news coverage, you know. I was also wondering what you thought about the case. I mean, did you really think that he was innocent? Probably. But then he walked. And killed his girlfriend. You defended him for that too, yeah? Yeah. Did you believe him then too? He kept saying the same thing. How he could never have killed anyone. But... I didn't believe him, no. Fighting for him in court made me sick to my stomach. Do you think he deserves the death penalty? That's enough of the question, Sugiura. <laughs> well, my bad. <laughs> Was that too far? <laughs> nah. If you say so. Um, Yagami-san? You're heading to the ADDC now, yes? I'm gonna grab a taxi for us. I'll wait for you over on Park Boulevard. Over here, Yagami-san. I have a taxi for us. I've heard a bit about this place before, but the ADDC, isn't it just one part of a larger organization? If I recall correctly, they call it the Medical Institute. Is that accurate? <laughs> yeah. They own every last inch of this campus. <sighs> it's incredible. Even with all these buildings, they're still getting budget to expand from that new drug. So? Is it the same as you remember? Yeah. Huh? Don't go too far ahead! Yagami-san!
What are you all shaken up for? Calm down. Just stick with me and you'll be fine. Got that, Yagami? Yagami-san! Try not to just ditch me, okay? Is something wrong? It's just... After three years, it still looks the same. Huh? Almost like time itself has stopped. Yagami-san. Come on. Front desk's over there. Do you have an appointment, sir? I don't, sorry. My name is Hoshino, from the Genda Law Office. This is my partner, Yagami. We're here to talk about a murder that took place in Kamurocho yesterday. A, a murder? A co-worker of ours named Shintani. He was the victim. We have a record that he called this center before he was killed. Huh? We're hoping you can help us track down exactly who he spoke to. I'm very sorry, sir, but I can't provide such private information. Well, could I at least talk to Director Kido instead? He's an old friend of mine. Just let him know Yagami stopped by, to say hello. Uh, I don't think that'll be necessary. Look over there. Gentlemen, I really don't know what else you want from me. I have nothing more to say. I've told the police all that I know. Yeah, I know. Sorry about all this, Director. Problem is, my partner here won't give it a rest till he sees the scene of the crime. But I'm sure we'll be leaving soon. Well, that's not what we agreed upon. You know this isn't about how long it takes. And what about Okubo? I take it he's still not fessed up? Uh, no. Not quite as of yet, sir. But we all saw where the body was. Exactly where he said it would be. Quite true. Not much point in fighting this now. The Minister has made it clear that he wants it resolved soon as well. Just look at how much trouble one contractor has caused. Sorry, which minister? I didn't know about this, sir. The health minister. It's all his call how much funding we get. Director, if I may, if you would just direct me to the scene of the crime, I could head over there myself. I'll be out of your hair in no time, I assure you. I'd rather you didn't wander on your own. So instead, she can show you. Terasawa-kun, these gentlemen here are Shintani-sensei and, uh, Yagami. It's a pleasure. I hope I can help you find what you need. Well, with that, I'll be taking my leave. Thank you again, Director. Apologies for all the trouble. This way. I can show you how to get to Wakusan's room. Who's Wakusan? The guy who died in his room? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And you are... Terasawa-san, huh? Wow, you're young. And a looker to boot. Um, can we keep this professional? Huh? Nice try, Shintani-sensei. Not the friendliest girl in town, huh? We're not exactly welcome guests here. After I busted my ass to pass the bar, I always figured I'd have my pick of the ladies.
Right this way, please. Straight ahead is the ADDC's general ward. Waku-san's room is on the fourth floor. This was the room assigned to Wakusan. What's down there? That's the research wing, where they develop all our new drugs. Oh. You can't get in without a gold key card, though. Not even I have one. <laughs> gold, huh? I suppose because it's the heart of the Center's operations. Huh. <laughs> Sounds like it's a whole nother world back there. Security like that must be a bitch. Come on, Yagami. Before he died, Wakusan spent most of his time in here. And when was he admitted? Two years ago. With Alzheimer's. Some kind of dementia, right? Alzheimer's is a neurodegenerative disease that leads to dementia, yes. In fact, it's the cause of almost 70% of all dementia cases. So, they're one and the same, kinda? Anyway, do what you gotta do, Yagami. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Suspicious. Hey, has anyone else slept here since Wakusan's death? Nobody, no. And Wakusan was missing from his room the morning of the incident, yes? That's right. So, he was murdered here, then carried out. I can't say for sure, but it's likely. Suspicious. Window sealed shut. There's no way Wakasan could have escaped through here. Suspicious. What the? Suspicious. All the rooms have windows like this, right? It seems like people would notice if something was going on in here. Well, we only have so many employees in this ward. The halls stay fairly busy, but it's mostly dementia patients moving between appointments. I see. I wonder how the room looks from the hallway. You got all you need from here, yeah? I think so. Hmm, you can definitely see what's going on from out here. Shintani-sensei, can you lay on the bed for me? Uh, I guess so. Care to join me, Terasawa-san? What do you got to lose? It was a joke! So from this vantage point, you can't make out the person's face. So... Was this the colossal waste of time I knew it'd be? Nope. I got something I'd only get from being here. Does it matter? It's been days. Case is practically closed. Shinpei Okubo is guilty as hell. Well, according to him, he's not. Well, of course that's what he says. Consider the facts, though, man. You want to review the case? Sure. Let's go over what we know so far. Whatever you want. All right, here we go. Our victim was the patient staying in this room. Koichi Waku, male, age 66. At 8.30 a.m. on the morning of the crime, the nurses noticed he was missing from his bed. Given Waku's degenerative state, 
He assumed he was wandering around the hospital somewhere. But after being unable to track him down, hospital staff filed a missing persons report. Right. You know what a dementia patient's like, though. Hard to imagine they'd make it outside on their own. The only conclusion, then, was that somebody must have taken him out of the hospital. After inspecting all the cars that came in and out of the center, they were left with one possible suspect. A laundry man by the name of Shinpei Okubo. It didn't take much prodding for Okubo to confess burying Waku's body out in the mountains. And lo and behold, three months after Waku disappeared, the cops found his body rotting away right where Okubo said it'd be. Cause of death was most likely suffocation, but they still don't know for sure. Any objections to this so far, Yagami-sensei? Actually, yeah. You're forgetting something. And what's that? Okubo-kun insists he didn't kill anyone. All he admits to is dumping the body. Oh, sure. But come on, Yagami. Guy's got a history of assault, and it's on record. Roughed up his girlfriend, accidentally broke her finger. Right, but that was over six years ago. He was just a kid. Got drunk, made a huge mistake. And what? It's okay for a kid to hit a woman? Of course not. But that's not what he's on trial for. True. I don't condone what he did. But legally, committing one crime doesn't mean you're guilty of another. Fine. But what about Okubo's shaky alibi? He said he left the center at 10 a.m. after grabbing the sheets from the general ward. Claimed Wakusan's corpse somehow got loaded into his truck. <laughs> Who's gonna believe garbage like that? If anyone should, it's his lawyers. Huh. <laughs> We're meeting with Okubo after this, right? You should just be honest with him. Tell him the case is unwinnable. Are you two done here? Yep. Can you show us the garage next? The one where Okubo-kun parked his truck. A service entrance, I think it was. That's the only other place we'll need to see today. We'll need to take an elevator down there. Follow me. Follow me. Hey, Yagami, you're never gonna last if you keep taking cases like this. Criminal suits are a constant test of your conviction. Your sense of justice. They don't even pay that well. Careful who you say that around. Look, just chill out, okay? Take it from me. I've been around the block way longer than you have. like a regular old garage to me. Hmm. You'd make it out with no problem if you put a body into your truck down here. It's quiet. It is. Hey, Yagami. Check this out. These are the carts they use to collect sheets and linens. Day of the crime, Okubo was all over the hospital with one of these things. It would have been simple for him to sneak a body in there and cart it right out. Maybe so. Where was Okubo parked on the day of the incident? Oh, um...
The truck was parked here, with the back facing the elevator. Here's a recreation of it. I see. DNA evidence from the victim was found in the flatbed of the truck. That's proof enough that the body was there. And when they confronted Okobo, he flat out admitted it. When was Wakusan last seen? Just before 8 a.m. on the day of the crime. Yeah, 7.50 to be precise. An ADDC scientist will be testifying to that. He claims he saw him nice and cozy in his bed. I see. Can we talk to this witness? I tried to get an appointment, but they shut me down. Said they don't want us interfering with their research anymore. They're not willing to make an exception this once? This isn't an issue you want to push, Yagami. Worst case scenario, you get charged with witness intimidation. All right, all right. Anyway, the victim was last seen at 7.50. That's right. Breakfast is at 8 o'clock, so the patients who can walk on their own gather in the break room. But on the day of his disappearance, 8.30 came and went with no sign of Wakusan. You thought you'd find him quickly. Didn't exactly turn out that way. Right. Got that, Yagami? Here, let's go over some more details. What we know is, Waku was taken out of his room sometime between 7.50 when he was last seen, and 8.30 when everyone noticed he was gone. During that 40-minute span, somebody suffocated Waku and stuffed him into the laundry bin. Nobody suspected there was a body in the cart. And the only clear culprit was Okubo, the man in charge of the laundry. To further back this up, DNA evidence from Waku was found in Okubo's truck. Then when the police questioned Okubo, he confessed to burying the body in the mountains of Okutama. Three months after the crime, Waku's corpse was finally found. With me? This thing's airtight, Yagami. I know you're getting into this, but come on. Just give it up already. You don't have a chance. Even though Okubo says he's innocent, I promised him we'd do everything we could. Not my problem. You shouldn't make promises you can't keep. <sighs> Fine, then I'll do it alone. You don't have to be involved. Even if I'm not, the loss will hurt Genda-sensei's reputation. I'm sorry, but our client says he's innocent. I can't back down from this. Ah, fine. I'll be in the lobby. Um, if you like. I could take you to see Wakusan's room again. You don't mind? Oh, that would be great. Um, are you finished? Yeah, I've seen what I need. Anything else you can share? How long will Okubo-san's sentence be? Huh? I if he's found guilty, that is. Probably ten years, maybe more. It's hard to say for sure. And what if he confesses? Would they shorten his sentence? Well, at the very least, it'd make a better impression than insisting he didn't do it. But you're still going to push an innocent plea? Even though Okubo-san is the one who'll suffer for it? If he's really not guilty, he won't have to. I'll win. But to be perfectly honest, this is my first criminal case. What? Civil cases have been a mixed bag for me, too. I've actually lost more than I've won. Is that so? Apparently, a smart lawyer would never even consider an innocent plea in this case. Guess it's a good thing that I'm not so smart then, because I honestly believe I can win. 
Terasawa-san, were you close to Okubo-kun? I spoke to him pretty often, yes. I would see him around the ward all the time. And what did you think of him? Did he seem like the kind of guy who'd do something like this? I'm sorry. The director told us not to say too much. Wait! If you know anything that can help, just get in touch, okay? I'll do whatever it takes to set Okubo-kun free, but I can't do it alone. Just give it some thought, Terasawa-san. Just now, we went to the ADDC. Thought I should have a look at things with my own eyes. And? How did it go? There's no chance you walk. You're practically a lost cause. Hey. Yagami-sensei, is that what you think? It's like this, Okubo. You tell me you're innocent, and I'll fight to the end. I really have nothing to lose by helping you out. It's just like I told you. Whoever did it is framing me. On the day of the crime, you were in the general war at the ADDC, yes? Starting at 8 a.m., you went around to each room and gathered the linens. Yes. Nobody would dispute that. And after that, you covered Wakusan's nose and mouth, suffocated him, and then carted him out in the laundry bin. That's not true. Wakusan wasn't there when I went into his room. I didn't see him at all that day. You have to believe me. And I do. So when you went down to leave the center at 10 a.m. after gathering the linens, you realized there was a body hidden in the truck. Yes. That's what happened. Then, after debating whether or not to report the body, you chose to hide it in the mountains. I had a criminal assault on my record. I knew the police would have suspected me if I went to them. Aren't you forgetting the bad blood you had with Wakusan? Huh? Bad blood? What are you talking about? Three days before the murder, Wakusan claimed Okubo-kun here punched him and stole his wallet. They told me all about it at the center. When did you even ask? While you were busy chatting up Terasawa-chan. <laughs> even if I bitch about it, I'm still damn good at my job. Well, Okubo-kun, did you take his wallet, or...? Not quite. They call it delusion of theft. It's a symptom of dementia. You think something's been stolen from you, then blame the first person you see. Not the easiest thing to deal with, right? Someone accuses you of theft for no reason? Must have been a shock. So when Wakusan tried to hit you, you just about hit him back. But I didn't hit him. No. You murdered him. I wouldn't kill a man over something like that. Ah, I wish I could believe you, pal. Come on, Okubo-kun. You've got a record of violence. It wasn't me. I swear. Somebody set me up. Please, you have to believe me. Whoever did this is laughing at all of us right now. <sighs> Calm down. Yagami-sensei, do you believe me? I do. Okay. The next time, come alone. Fine. I can take a hint. You and Yagami-sensei can cuddle up all you want. Hey. You know that nurse, Terasawa-san? Cute girl. It sounded like she was worried about you. Bet you'd have a chance with her once you get out of here. I don't know. If you'll excuse me.
So Shintani just left you hanging, huh? He's got to learn some damn patience. Maybe so. But this is my case now. I can handle it myself. Huh. Okay. Yagami-san. Hmm? Have you seen Mafia lately? Well, where's this coming from? She's just not that great with men. I suggest you be more assertive. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, you mean that friend of yours, Saurikun? She's got Shintani all riled up. Said he'd have been nicer to you if he knew you had friends who looked like her. <laughs> Jackass. Hey, nothing's official yet, guys. Regardless, keep it on the down low, okay? Yet? That word says more than you think. <laughs> I'll keep my lips sealed. Mafia Kuhn's a prosecutor, right? Isn't it kind of taboo for her to date a defense attorney? Can we not do this? Either way, guess the Okobo case comes first. Pleading innocent, yeah? That's the plan. What is your plan here? This isn't gonna be an easy win. Well, I'm working on that. There's one piece of evidence that still bothers me. Yeah? And what's that? It's the hospital room the victim was staying in. This is the last place Wakusan was seen before he disappeared. The window doesn't open, so the only way out is through the door. No one saw him leave, though, even though there are always people in the halls. And the only one who entered the room was Okubo with his laundry cart. Hey, I don't want to be a downer, but doesn't that point to Okubo being the killer? Well, that's not my point, though. The evidence I showed you is... That evidence won't win you the case. What the hell's your problem? Was that Shintani? I think so. Get back here! <laughs> uh, that bastard. Oh, was eavesdropping on you. What the hell? Uh, I tried to stop him, but... Uh... Pulled a stun gun on me. <sighs> hey! Wait up! You won't get away! Woman. Help! Someone help me! Aren't you Terasawa-san? Let me go! We got a groper out here? 
scum of the earth! <laughs> Not on my watch, you son of a bitch! Can all lawyers fight like that? Did you really need to run away like that? I assume you came to see me. There was something I wanted to talk to you about, yes. But I wasn't sure if I should. Then that pig-headed friend of yours started shouting, so I just lost it. Okay, but did you have to tase him? Not that he didn't have it coming. Anyway, I'm listening if you want to talk. No matter what it is, I'll keep your secret. Anything you tell me will fall under client attorney privilege. Well, you know the witness who last saw Wakusan? Said he saw him sleeping in his bed. Uh huh. Well, that witness is a man by the name of Shonasan. He's one of the scientists at the ADDC. Not only that, but he's the director's right hand man, too. And this is him? Yes. He's a very dedicated doctor, so the nurses have a lot of faith in him. But something felt off when I heard what he had to say about the incident. And what's that? I guess I'm just skeptical as to whether or not he actually saw Wakusan. I don't think he's intentionally deceiving us, but he may be mistaken somehow. And if I had to guess, I'd say the other nurses feel the same. Still, why hasn't anyone mentioned this until now? How could we? Nurses talking about a doctor behind his back? That's not something a nurse could do without consequences. And if it came to a courtroom testimony... None of you would testify? Maybe the other nurses wouldn't, but I would. I never really fit in over there anyway. Besides... Yeah? I think Okubo-san is innocent. Oh, really? Sounds like I've finally got an ally on my team. I'm currently employed as a researcher at the Advanced Drug Development Center. Part of our research consists of clinical tests we perform on patients in the general ward of the center. On the day of the crime, I was making my usual rounds through the ward. And what time was that? Around 7.50. You're sure? Yes, the patients eat breakfast at precisely 8 o'clock. I always head to the break room myself, uh, right around then, too. 
This break room, to be precise? That's correct. Our more mobile patients walk there for breakfast instead of eating in their own rooms. Then, while the nurses help the patients eat, I ask about how they feel and how the medicine is treating them. And on the day of Wakusan's disappearance, you pass by his room before going to the break room? Yes. And in that room, you saw Wakusan lying on the bed? Yes. Can you describe the situation to us as you remember it? The door has a window, so you can see into the room from the hallway. And this is the room you're referring to, yes? That's correct. From where I was standing in the hallway, I could see Waku-san lying in bed. He was asleep, with a blanket covering most of his body. And what time was that? Around 7.50. No further questions. Yagami-sensei, why did you call her to the stand? She actually asked to testify. Is that a problem? Not really, no. Terasawa-san, you were present for Shono-san's testimony just now, yes? Yes. And what is your opinion on that testimony? For a scientist, I felt his wording was rather imprecise. And as a medical professional, I felt his actions were negligent. Could I ask you to be a little more specific? Our witness, Shono-san, claims he saw Waku-san sleeping in his bed during his morning rounds. However, there's no way he could have known that just by looking in from the hallway. I have evidence supporting Terasawa-san's testimony. Please look at this. It's a photograph of the victim's room as viewed from the hallway. In other words, this is what Shono-san would have seen when he checked in on Waku-san. Shono-san was lying when he said he saw Waku-san in the bed. Excuse me? What he saw from the door was likely nothing more than a bulge of sheets. He couldn't have been able to identify it specifically as Wakusan. So to claim as much in his testimony seems like quite an exaggeration, don't you think? But common sense would dictate otherwise, would it not? Who would be in the bed other than Wakusan? The staff nurses are trained to always enter a room when checking in on a patient. In Wakusan's case, it's impossible to tell anything just by looking in from the hallway. There was actually one time a while back where we thought he was under the covers, only to find Wakusan eating in the break room a second later. And upon re-examining the room, we realized that we had mistaken a bunched up pillow for Wakusan. The witness makes an important distinction. The prosecution asserts that Shono-san's testimony is clear, that the victim was taken out of his room at some point between 7.50 and 8.30 in the morning. They claim that because of this time frame, the defendant must have smuggled Wakusan's body out in his laundry bin. But if Shono-san's testimony is invalid, as the defense asserts, we have to consider the possibility that Wakusan was taken in the middle of the night when nobody else was around. After which, the killer could have waited until the morning to plant the body in the defendant's truck. In other words, the defense establishes that there is reasonable doubt that Okubo-san is the killer, rendering the prosecution's central argument unsound. Your Honor, taking this new testimony into account, I'd like to call Shono-san back to the stand for cross-examination. Shono-san. Yes? I'll get right to the point. On the day of the crime, what did you see when you looked into Wakusan's room? I saw Wakusan asleep in his bed. 
I think. And did you get a clear look at his face? I don't remember. So it's possible that it could have been someone other than Wakusan in that bed. Or maybe even a pillow that you mistook to be Wakusan's body. Isn't that right? Objection! The defense is leading the witness. Sustained. Please rephrase the question. Shono-san, can you say without a doubt that Wakusan was in that bed when you checked on him? I... I, I don't think I can, no. Then the defense rests. But I do have a quick remark for the prosecution. Huh? The charges against my client stem from your assertion that he's the only possible suspect, assuming the crime took place within the stated time frame. However, the defense has proven without a doubt that Shonosan's testimony is unreliable, establishing reasonable doubt for my client. I would suggest then that you withdraw the charges against my client. With such inconclusive evidence, you'll only be wasting the court's precious time. The prosecution does not consider the witness's testimony inconclusive. His memory of the incident may be fuzzy, yes, but that doesn't change that he saw the victim. So, your whole case is based on a fuzzy memory? This promising young man's future is at stake, and you're willing to throw that away on unreliable testimony? Dr. Shono is a bright and diligent researcher. After watching his own grandmother develop dementia, he vowed to create a drug that could cure the disease. After paying his own way through medical school, he went on to become the head researcher at the ADDC. Day after day, Dr. Shono visits his sick patients out of the kindness of his heart, leading to his valiant testimony here today. If you want to know whether I trust this man, then my answer is a resounding yes. In other words, because he's such a great researcher, his testimony is infallible. His own admission that he's not sure is somehow overlooked? Is that the sum of it? <clears throat> because from here, it sounds like you're putting your faith in Shono-san's title, not his testimony today. The prosecution is not as easily swayed as you think. And you want to talk reputation? What of your client's history of domestic abuse? Six years ago, the defendant broke his girlfriend's finger. The poor girl is still suffering from the effects. And the cause? A minor, drunken disagreement. Now, fast forward to what occurred a few days prior to the crime. Wakusan, suspecting the defendant of stealing his wallet, lashed out and punched the defendant in the face. Given the clearly violent nature of Okubo-san here, that alone would be motivation enough to murder the poor old... Is something wrong, ma'am? Please remain seated while court is in session. Terasawa-san? Okubo-san is not a violent person. And he hasn't even had a drink in over six years. Not a single drop since the incident. My court will not stand for this commotion. He didn't blame Wakusan at all. He knew that the outburst was just caused by his dementia. That it was all the sickness's fault. So there was no reason for him to resort to murder. Terasawa-san, please. Okubo-san really is an incredible, caring person. Please leave this courtroom at once. You're right that he may be hard to approach, but he's a kind soul, and he always keeps his promises. Okubo-san's not the only person in this courtroom who would be affected by a guilty verdict, either. As a matter of fact, it would break my heart. And even through it all, he wanted me to keep this a secret, not to tell anyone, not even his lawyer, that we were dating. Even though he knew he could have ended up in prison, Making sure I was safe was the only thing in the world he cared about. That's just who he is! But when the prosecution has already decided he's a criminal, how could he possibly be given a fair trial? <sighs> uh. 
Her little outburst wasn't technically admissible, but as the trial dragged on, it hung over the jury like a stone. And in the end, Shinpei Okubo was found not guilty. But only a month after his release, everything changed. The same girl who had so bravely proclaimed Okubo's innocence died by the man's own hand. Something wrong? No, it's nothing, Vice Minister. But... I haven't seen you in about three years, Kido-san. I see you're still the director. You look familiar, but I can't quite place the name. I seem to recall you looking sharper. I'm a detective based in Kamurocho now. The name's Yagami. Ah, I remember now. You're the reason Terasawa-kun's no longer with us. Remember, Shono? Okubo-san was unstoppable. If only my testimony had been better. Shono-san, right? Does it matter? What brings you here, anyway? I'm investigating a murder. And I'll need your cooperation with it. Just like old times. Yes, I see. Yes. Thank you. It does seem we received a phone call from this Shintani-san you speak of. Do you know who he was calling? Dr. Shona. The same Shono-san you were just with? Yes. However, it's unclear as to what the point of the call was meant to be. Shono was away from his desk at the time, you see, and Shintani-san didn't leave a message. You have no idea what he wanted to talk about? None. Shono says he doesn't know a Shintani-san, and sees no reason why he would be calling. Oh, really? Uh, Shono and I co-authored the research paper on AD-9. We're quite well known, as it turns out. Sometimes, complete strangers pretend to be close friends or relatives in order to contact us. Perhaps Shintani-san fell into that category. Have you heard of the mole murders taking place in Kamurocho, Dr. Kido? Three Yakuza, each one with their eyes gouged out. It's a grisly business. Shintani was killed in the same way. I've seen the news. Can you think of anything tying the ADDC to those murders? Huh? Look, just what are you implying? Look, I believe we're done here. There's nothing I can help you with. Please stop! You can't! Who are you? Detective Kuroiwa, Kamuro Police, Organized Crime. One of your guests here has information related to the case I'm currently investigating. That would be you, Yagami. Hmm? I'd like to speak to you as a material witness to the murder of the lawyer, Masamichi Shintani. Is that so? 